Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Patty. Dr. Angela. And today we're going to go over the basics of hormone testing. So a lot of our patients come see us wanting to look at their hormones. They just intuitively feel like something's going on with their hormones. Or a lot of times my patients will have come in and they've done blood work already with some hormone testing, but I often find that it's incomplete. And as naturopathic doctors, we like to really look at the whole picture and gather a full um, load of data and to really see what's going on. Yeah, because generally we're trying to figure out like what the underlying cause is, what's mm -hmm. the underlying issue with the hormone imbalance. So more information is best mm -hmm doing that investigative work. So there's different ways to test hormones. Mm -hmm. There's blood, there's saliva, there's urine. Your conventional doctor is trained to test uh, components of your blood. So whether most that be time. your cholesterol or your estrogen, most of the time they're gonna work on your blood work. And I'm sure many of you have done blood work in the past. Um, Certain hormones are better tested and it's more accurate to measure through different ways. And so your thyroid, for instance, I'm sure many of you out there have had your thyroid levels tested to some degree, and that's gonna be always best through blood. Mm -hmm. But if you're measuring your estrogen or progesterone or sex hormones, the best is actually through your saliva. And you can also measure them through urine, through metabolites. And that's a test that we often do. And we've done a video on that before. Um, and we'll link relevant videos. Yeah, as usual. absolutely. We've done a thyroid video as well. So we'll put that in the description box. So just know that there's different ways of measuring your hormones. Um, and, and they're useful at different times. Definitely. And sometimes we want to co-measure. Definitely. And just the way that you would never measure your thyroid through your urine, like it just will not be an accurate measure. There's certain hormones through blood, it might be helpful, but it's not going to give you the full picture or the best picture. And so sometimes your primary care doctor may not have been trained in functional medicine or, um, you know, functional tests. And so they may have kind of an idea. I see this a lot. They may want to measure something through your blood, but um, it's maybe not the most accurate way to get the full picture. Yeah, like the adrenals would be a perfect situation mm -hmm. and we'll go into that. But, you know, we're basically we're going to rule out things like Addison's or Cushing's through a blood test, but we're not really going to get a functional read throughout the day. And that just means, by Dr. Angela saying Addison's and Cushing's, that yeah, it you. will measure, <laughs> um, you know, Either extreme end. ends of, you know, total deficiency or over-functioning, and so disease, yeah. when your adrenal glands are in actual disease. But yeah. it's not gonna measure like, how's it just doing? I like, know. is it functioning optimally? Am I tired? Is it a little deficient? So we'll kind of get into that because you also wanna measure at different points throughout Definitely. the day. And believe it or not, even when we're like exhausted, a lot of us are still in the normal range. And mm -hmm. so just where are we in the normal range? Yeah. Just figuring that out. Yes, and just to kind of um, piggyback on that, what when you measure your cortisol, mm -hmm. it may look at just how much cortisol your body's producing. So you may have really low morning cortisol, but you produce enough throughout the rest of the day that your overall levels look normal. Yeah. And so your MD, your medical doctor who isn't trained in functional labs may just do your blood work and say, okay, well, you're in the normal range, you're fine. But a naturopathic doctor or a functional medicine doctor may do, will do potentially, you know, urine or saliva testing that really looks at, well, how is it in the morning? How is it after you wake up in the afternoon, evening, and really looking at how is your, how are your adrenals and your stress hormones functioning um, throughout the day? Mm -hmm. So That's with that thing. said, um, let's go down a list of what hormones are typically measured and what you should look for. So this video is to help educate you in terms of either, you know, working collaboratively with your naturopathic doctor or integrative doctor, or maybe asking for some of these Definitely. labs for your, from your primary care doctor. Um, so one, first and foremost, many people have you know done this already, is your thyroid. So we wanna measure thyroid, but I wanna emphasize that many, this, and I see this, we both see this yeah, all lots. the time, where you come in, patients come in with labs and doctors have only done TSH, yeah. or if you're lucky, maybe TSH and T4, mm -hmm. and if you're really lucky, <laughs> maybe TSH, free T4, free T3, I should, I should um, clarify. Yeah. If your budget allows, your insurance allows, you know, um, ideally, like, you know, 
to be doing it the proper way, I really like to do a full thyroid panel, and that would include TSH, total T4, total T3, free T4, free T3. We will list these down below, Definitely. so don't you don't have to get out a <laughs> the pen and pencil. Paper. Yeah. <laughs> then there's another value called reverse T3, which almost no doctors I know do unless mm -hmm. they've been trained in this. And reverse T3, just to touch on briefly. Yep. If your body's under a lot of stress, even though you might your thyroid is functioning properly, it may take that thyroid hormone and put it into storage and it converts it into this inactive form. And so you're like, if you don't measure it, your actual thyroid hormones can seem normal, but it's like your body's like tucking it away, like putting it in the garage. And so you don't have any actual hormone that you can use. So you can then have thyroid symptoms. And then on top of that, um, thyroid antibodies. So mm -hmm. um, we did a whole yes. video series on autoimmune thyroid things. And so we'll definitely link that mm -hmm. here, but for yeah. the quickie here, the TPO yes. antibody and thyroglobulin. And thyroglobulin. Yep. So TPO and thyroglobulin. So that would be a complete thyroid panel. If your doctor or your insurance isn't willing to, you know, allow you to do these tests, I would say you can the next modification would be TSH, mm -hmm. free T4, free T3, yeah. reverse T3, and those um, antibodies. And the reason it's so important is so many of us have fatigue. And so really just trying to get mm -hmm. to the underlying reason of fatigue. That will let you know, is thyroid playing a piece of that fatigue or is mm -hmm. it something else? And we can move on. Absolutely. And then the other hormones that you may want to, that you, you know, might include in your panel would be the sex hormones. So estrogen mm -hmm. and progesterone, progesterone. Um, for women, but also you might want to measure estrogen in men as well, especially Definitely. if you are being supplemented with testosterone, your body might might be converting that into more estrogen. Um, Sometimes if we gain weight, mm -hmm. um, fat cells will um, push testosterone into estrogen in men, and so just making sure that that's not happening because yeah. over time libido can shift, and yes. sexual function can shift if our estrogen levels get high, if we're men. Yeah. So. So estrogen and progesterone, and I usually run estradiol. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, and it won't say estrogen, so it'll, you know, you want to ask for estradiol and progesterone. and. It's really important to measure these hormones at specific points in your cycle, in your menstrual cycle. So we have a follicular phase where it's estrogen is more dominant, mm -hmm. and we have the second half luteal phase where progesterone is more dominant. Mm -hmm. And both of us have seen patients, their doctors have ordered estrogen and progesterone, estradiol and progesterone, and just any old time during the cycle. Yeah, and it's really important to know when because mm -hmm. the levels are very different depending yeah. on what you know, portion of the cycle we're looking at. So you want to know if you're actually high or low um, depending on when you're checking. So um, we both run more um, tests on day 21. So more the, the luteal cycle, portion mm -hmm, of the cycle. The second half. And that's for p women who are typically a 28-day cycle. Mm -hmm. And if you're not a 28-day cycle, finding out when you ovulate and doing the test five days after ovulation or seven days before your predicted date of bleed. Men's, yeah, your bleed, yeah. your period. Um, so those are a couple ways. But also, sometimes we measure day three, which is when estrogen is at its peak, to see what's going on with your estrogen. But both of us do generally run day 21, mm -hmm. and that's quite mm -hmm. typical. So make sure that if your doctor says, okay, sure, let's run your estrogen and progesterone, make sure you remind them, um, I need to do this on day 21, right? Or is there a certain day that you want me to do this test? We yeah. don't want to be just doing it any old time. So that's a really Unless important. you're no longer cycling, then, you know, it doesn't yes. matter. But <laughs> if you're yes. cycling, we really want to know. And we will do if you're interested. And please leave a comment below if that's something you want us to talk about. But we will do a separate video on either perimenopause and or menopause. And so, yes, if you're no longer cycling, then obviously you don't anyway. have a day 21. So <laughs> um, that's a... Um, that you don't have to worry about that. And then as far as, um, in addition to estrogen and progesterone, testosterone. Testosterone, so, total and the free. other sex, um, yes. So you wanna do total testosterone, free testosterone. Mm -hmm. And this just means the total amount that's in your body versus like what's free floating in your blood in that moment, what's mm -hmm. actually usable. So I've had patients who have high total, but they're doing okay yeah. because the body has bound up 
um, the, you know, the excess amounts. Yep, sex and hormone binding globulin. There's other mm-hmm. chaperone proteins that mm-hmm. will piggyback when yeah, the hormones kinda, get too high. They kind of hold their yep. little hand, yeah, <laughs> So and kind of bind them. And so really what's free is what's most important. So make sure you get total and free testosterone if you're measuring that. And then for some people, you may want to measure something called DHT. Mm-hmm. And this is the type, the form of testosterone that creates more androgenic symptoms. Um, for my female patients, we've seen hair growth mm-hmm. on the face or hair loss on the head, acne, mm-hmm. things like that, mm-hmm. um, loss of muscle mass. Mm-hmm. Um, but also for men, mm-hmm. when do you measure DHT? In Definitely men? if there's balding um, issues mm-hmm. going on, like more body hair and we're losing head hair, mm-hmm. that's um, one of the times that we would measure um, if there's sexual function issues going on. Just Mm -hmm. wanting to see, is testosterone moving to Mm -hmm. a different form? And maybe to make sure their prostate is Mm -hmm. okay too. So DHT would be, so total free and possibly DHT would be. Um, And then there's something called DHEA Mm -hmm. um, dash S. So that would be the, um, it's one of the, what we call one of the mother or father hormones. It kind of goes cholesterol and then breaks down. And so DHEA is at the top of that chain. So this is one that's measured, that we often measure through the Dutch test, but mm-hmm. it is a measurable amount um, in your blood panel yeah. as well. So you If I'm running it. a blood, I will just kind of mark it off too if I'm running a hormone panel there. And I also will throw in pregnenolone many times too, just because thinking upstream again and mm-hmm. adrenal function. And, so looking at that as well. And we'll put and, these in the Yeah, and the thing to remember here, when we say like, oh, we do it on Dutch, meaning urine and, sal- and mm-hmm. or saliva, and we do it on blood, just remember that this means on blood, it's measuring what's floating around in that moment in your mm-hmm. blood. Mm-hmm. When that needle goes in your arm when you're getting your blood drawn, what's happening? That's a snapshot. It doesn't measure um, the storage and what's really functioning in your tissues and your organs. And so when it's we, part of the story, it's not unimportant, but mm-hmm. it's not the total picture. And right. So. so it just gives us like um, it's not the complete picture. And so I, for me, I feel like it doesn't really look into what is actually available and functioning and. When I do saliva and urine, we get a more complete picture of the metabolites and what's actually in our organs, in our tissues, what could potentially be available, as opposed to just what's like running around right now and able for use. Yeah, and the reason this is important, I mean, sometimes, you know, typically when you're going into your doctor, not always, but often there's something going on and we're trying to get to the bottom of what's going on. And so if there are a lot of hormone imbalance symptoms, but like the blood looks great, it can make it harder to figure out, all right, where is right. the problem? And so just having kind of like a closer look, another way of cross-checking things is helpful. Sometimes they say very similar things. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they say very different things. So mm-hmm. it's nice during the same window of time to be able to compare yeah. blood and urine and or saliva, you mm-hmm. know, however. Because it may go measured. a little bit deeper into mm-hmm. your body's function. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like some, you really can't measure through urine or you can't yeah. measure very well through blood. Um, and then those are sort of hormones you may be interested in or have heard of there's we talked about adrenals mm-hmm. earlier so mm-hmm. measuring your cortisol and we kind of touched on that already so and DHA. Um, dha and, and cortisol so that you can measure through blood but we measure mostly through saliva and urine mm-hmm. and i don't know if you do other testing but i almost exclusively use dutch now mm-hmm. um, so really... they are you can do the Dutch test through just urine and through the metabolites, or you can do a little bit more of a comprehensive test through saliva and urine. And I'll get into that Mm -hmm. a little bit at the end here. But, um, and then in addition to that, some hormones you may not have considered measuring would be uh, a fasting insulin. Mm -hmm. So we've done a video before on insulin resistance and Mm -hmm. what that means. And so, you know, in addition to your normal blood work that looks at your blood sugar and so your, glucose mm-hmm, and your hemoglobin A1C, um, you can do fasting insulin in addition to kind of get a little bit of a better picture of maybe if you have insulin resistance. Um, and then we don't think of this as a hormone, but vitamin D. So many of you, a little fun fact, may not have realized that the doctor who discovered vitamin D named it a vitamin, but it's actually a hormone and functions as a hormone in our body. They just never really converted the name. So vitamin D, D. hormone D, (laughs) yeah. Um, I don't know if that has the same ring to it, but it is involved in our mood, our inflammation, our immune system. Even balance and coordination has so many functions. Yeah, 
I didn't even know that. Yeah, I was at a seminar ages ago, and they were talking about um, elderly people taking more falls if they didn't have enough vitamin D oh. because the muscles weren't getting the yeah. messaging. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's kind of like magnesium. It works on a whole cascade of cellular effects. So just remember that vitamin D is actually a hormone and not a vitamin. Um, so in addition to that, in terms of what you want to test, we also just wanted to give you a few little tips um, you know, some or some, pearls that yeah, come up and practice some things. little bits of information. So, for example, if you are on oral contraceptive or any kind of hormonal contraception, ideally, after you discontinue, you would want to have three natural cycles before you um, do any hormone testing. To it takes it some be. time for the body to re-regulate. So, I mean, you know, if mm-hmm. if um, finances are not a thing and you know you don't have a limitation with resources you could do a baseline at that moment in time just to see what you're running at mm-hmm. but in order to really see what your body is doing after getting off of um, a hormonal contraceptive you need to give yourself a little bit of time and then you um, had also mentioned previously about transdermal mm-hmm. hormones. this is a big one so um, sometimes I forget to mention this to my patients and then they get worried um, so patients who have tested low in progesterone levels, if they start supplementing with transdermal progesterone, it does not show up well on blood. It shows up very well on saliva, so-so on urine, but it definitely does not show up well in blood. And many people do blood testing because insurance typically covers it more mm-hmm. efficiently. Um, so just don't be worried if you're using a transdermal progesterone and it's not showing up on blood, you are getting it. Um, so you could verify with a saliva test and you would see that the levels are through the roof. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the only other little bit that I wanted to add was when Dr. Angel and I use the Dutch test um, to measure sex hormones and adrenals, and it also covers a few neurotransmitters and B vitamins. It's a very amazing and wonderful and complete test if your doctor can run it for you. But there is one that does just urine and one that does urine and saliva. Mm-hmm. And the difference with that is, excuse me, when you test your adrenals, Um, Although the urine test is great and it looks at different points throughout Mm -hmm. the day, there is something called a cortisol awakening response. And that's sort of an initial spike in cortisol that your body should have. And when that when your body has that, it sort of tr- it's like a light switch that turns on a lot of anti-inflammatory and other hormonal pathways that make everything else function smoothly. And that cortisol awakening response really only can be measured through saliva. So some of my patients we will do both. Um, yeah, if there's more of an adrenal picture, more of a problem, and we're trying to get that sensitive information, that would definitely help mm-hmm. us there. So I hope that you found this helpful. I know it's a lot of information, but so many patients are confused about hormone testing, how to do it. Well, there's so many different opinions out there too. True. Yeah, so. so hopefully you found this helpful and it gave you a little bit more insight. And Check that some, description box because we'll add more because mm-hmm. it's you know, a lot to Just take Just a in. little bit more education. You, know, you can always watch the video again if you have a doctor's appointment coming up or you're working with your naturopathic doctor. So. Um, Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here. If you have additional questions on this or any other topic, please chime in as usual. Keep letting us know what you want to learn about, and we'll see you back here really soon. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.